Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I am here with Matt, the guy I started the channel with. And as per request from our super fan, you know, our, our 202 fan, which you would know what that is if you were paying attention to the channel, Matt. I don't have logins. <laughs> I don't have logins. Give me logins. I will pay attention. You had Jeez. logins. What did you do with all the logins that I gave you? I had the anyway, and tonight, as per request, I am drinking the toppling Goliath Cherry Fandango beer. Uh, this is a really, really good craft brewery. Um, you know, it's close enough that I can get to. It's still pretty far away, but it's close enough that I can get to. So, how about you? Can I have 10 plug in? <laughs> I'm drinking Coors Banquet. <laughs> All right, and tonight is actually a topic that, um, Matt brought up, and I want him to take it away. Matt, what? Uh, let's oh, let you have the floor. Put, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna put this on me. All right. No, fine. I don't. No, I'm not gonna put it on you. But I was just what? Why? Because you brought this up. And well, I, I did usually don't like it, talking Star Wars so much, but I understand your points. Well, it's also this came after years, and I do mean years of seeing this shit. And it was an article titled that star wars is making obi-wan buy and i just i hit a point where i'm sitting here going okay and i'm thinking ewan mcgregor alec guinness and the character and the character development that has gone into this character and contrary to royce's opinion i actually enjoyed kenobi i did and I'm sitting here going, why in the hell do we need this to be a thing? Like, I just, I don't, it doesn't matter. The guy was a Jedi Knight. The guy was on the, he was a Jedi Master. He served on the council. He had no romantic relationships canonically that matter. So why are we trying to retroactively make this a thing? It's the same thing with Dumbledore all over again, except just more recent and i i don't understand the obsession with making characters this that or the other thing anymore i just i don't and i understand that you know people of that affinity want to see characters that represent them but why obi-wan why are we doing this now why why is this a thing why do we have to take characters and make them a sexual orientation or another why why does it matter why can they not just be a character anymore um well and i and we talked a little bit before this so i could kind of tell yeah, you the no, angles that, well no yeah. the, the angles that i was gonna attack no and i, I say that for people checking this out my first my my first theory on this one is that um based off of which is what's happening now and people have to see themselves on screen, which is just such a weird thing. Yeah, I, I think that we, I actually I hate this right now. The fact that I can see myself, I keep looking over like, am I at the right angle? <laughs> this is no. It, uh, but I, but I, I'm not. No, but, I'm an audio guy. I, I, I hide behind my stick and I play my stick very well. That sounded wrong. Um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> The, the stick he's talking player. about guitars like as <laughs> yeah, yeah but anyway the no the big thing here is i think that we have more people in our population than we realize that do not possess the mental capabilities to separate fantasy and fiction from reality uh, well no and i mean we can see that across society the, at this point like i you talk about or I see people talk about, it, I should say, how much they identify with a certain character or a certain, you know, story or more often than not both. I mean, uh, I know both you and I followed Supernatural for a long time. I still followed it to the end. You did not. Um, I didn't watch the but, final season. But you see how much they identify with that and the culture that sprung up around that. And I'm yeah. not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just you started to see people that couldn't separate the actors from the characters. And you start to see this more and more where I think to a lot of people, a certain character they choose to identify with because it's a choice. It, it is. Yeah. You see certain character aspects and you go, oh, hey, that is how I am. 
But the problem is, is that a well-written character that is meant to entertain is supposed to be identifiable. Like, you're supposed to identify, at least to a certain degree, with your protagonist. Otherwise, you don't root for them. Mm -hmm. And so throwing all the sexuality and identification in there with it, it just... I, I don't understand it, it, the point uh, and not the, let me clarify here is that I'm not saying we shouldn't have, you know, LGBT characters, so to speak. I'm just questioning why we have to take an established character and apply these things retroactively. Well, that leads into the other idea that I wanted to attack and I don't, and I, and I think these two things are fairly separated, but yeah. Um, essentially what well and there's a third point that i'm not going to get into because that gets into the whole <laughs> no you're just a conspiracy theorist no um you are a conspiracy theorist the problem is just that sometimes you're right and it scares me just give me uh. six months <laughs> give me six months to prove you're wrong it happens more often than you not would about like. it yeah but no and it's i like six for twelve but that's still a better batting ratio than I'm happy with. <laughs> but no, and the other the other side of this too is I think that we have people who don't understand the the fantastic, although bastardized system, but the fantastic system that we've had up to this point that has gotten us here. And because they feel like they're downtrodden by it, they have to destroy everything great about it and change it. And it's kind of, it's where we get it. Hold on one second. It's where we get into the historical revisionism, right? What we're yes. seeing right yes. now is the, again, these people can't separate reality from fiction. And so to them, all they're doing is just historical revisionism, just telling the correct history you know, that should be told there, because the, I, I, the other history I, I'm, I'm was gonna, just a lie. I, I'm going to cut across you here right now because there's no such thing as correct history. There is just history. Straight up. but Straight up. I, what you, happened, happened. But you know what I'm saying, though, right? I, I, I understand 100% yeah. what you're saying. It is we were wrong in the past and we have to correct it now. But... but but they don't want to do there that. Is... They, they don't. They don't believe in correcting the the mistakes of the past by actually becoming better and becoming more than what they currently are. They simply want to stay as they are, and through that, just simply change uh, uh, again, change the narrative around the characters. But 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 again, I don't understand how making Dumbledore gay, Obi Wan by. I don't understand how they accomplish that through that inclusivity. The great sin, well, you can, but, but but you could do that with other characters. I mean, all you have to do is just the sin. Disney the... has infinite money. Make another show where you have a non-binary that, or another. But that doesn't correct the sin of the past to these people. But but what was the sin? Obi Wan was asexual. He was ancient when we saw him in A New Hope, and then we saw his you know kind of. The thing I actually liked about the Kenobi series was seeing him struggle with the trauma of what happened. And that was a very relatable thing. And I think a lot of something that you would expect considering the events of Revenge of the Sith. Um, as much as I love the final lightsaber fight between him and Vader, spoilers, um, never, never should have happened. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know what? I'll forgive it. He won't. I will. Um I, I didn't forgive it's, them when they got rid of the extended universe, dude. That's where I bowed uh, out of Star Wars. Where it's not a canon debate. It, it's just, I don't understand what that adds, really, is what it, it comes down to. It rectifies the sins of the past because they did what not... what is the sin? They didn't recognize somebody's and or they, them, bullshit sexuality. The but sin... It never, it was never an issue. That's like, why. Uh, that's exactly it. Because it wasn't the focal point. That was the sin. Because people have lost their that. belief. People have lost their belief in something beyond themselves. And most people cannot and are not smart enough to, to, to do the proper self-reflection that it takes in order to become better. So their only belief in themselves is skin deep. That's the thing. That's that's why it has to be injected. That's why sexuality matters so, so much to these people because that's the only thing that they can see because they they don't know how to look what? inward. 
what a depressing life viewpoint though i mean the only thing you can give yourself is what you'll bang i mean come on there's got to be more than that i mean obviously you and i know that there is but well but whatever what i'd hope that more people than not know that that's a thing well, but, but whatever has entered into this is, oh, i'm so sick of the freaking mosquitoes sorry they've been flying around like crazy i'm good <laughs> The, uh, you have mosquitoes too. Yeah, but not in my room. You did. Yeah. Yeah. I win. The biggest issue. <laughs> hey, you got one. Good for you. <laughs> I got to take them where I can get them. <laughs> I was going to say, you want to pull up my track record in this friendship? Anyway. Um, no. We're but... actually more even than you want to give it credit for, dick. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> However you got to phrase it. However you have to phrase it. That's fine. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, cheers buddy. <laughs> and cheers to all of you out there checking this out. But that's the point here, dude, is that people are not able. You know, I was really been thinking about lately. It was that interview with um, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien and obviously Lord of the Rings being. That a, had uh, been a minute ago because he died and went like the 80s. Uh, the interview I'm thinking of, it was late 70s, early 80s. But anyway, this interview that I was it thinking. Is... Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't an interview with J.R.R. Tolkien. It was an interview right. about J.R.R. Tolkien with his son, okay. Christopher. Okay. 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 Which, that makes you more know, sense. God rest his soul. Christopher passed away a few years ago. But yes. the, so Lord of the Rings games gains massive popularity, right? And J.R.R. Tolkien. Peter very, Jackson. Yes. No, 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 no. I'm talking about back when he released. Oh, him. oh, oh, you mean the initial surge, the, the, not initial, the, re, the yes. resurgence. Yeah. yeah that... Not the resurgence. Okay. Of, yeah. Okay. So okay. Lord of the Rings gains massive popularity. And somebody here in the States sent J.R.R. Tolkien a letter and said that they were going to have this like hobbit wedding and they wanted him to like facilitate it. And to the best I of my recollection, no, and he didn't. And he thought it was appalling because he very much believed in the separation of fact and fiction and reality and fantasy. He believed that those two things should be separated from each other. And I believe that he probably was onto something greater than the, because I I've been, I've been well, thinking about this and this well, hold on sorry. because the two yeah, can yeah. corrupt each other. Because if they, we no, they absolutely can. Yeah, and that's my point: is these two can corrupt each other to a degree that makes them uh, uh, in, uh, incomprehensible. We we my my, my the, the point I was going to make is, um, you know, parable. The idea of understanding through story, and I, you know, the <laughs> that's Jewish gone. religion and now the Christian religion um, that followed it are very much based in that. I mean, if you ever heard the story of Jesus with the uh, basket of fish and bread, mm -hmm. it's a parable. If you ever heard the story of yeah, the, the prodigal on the son, it's a, it, it, yeah. And the prodigal son, it's a parable. It's a story meant to teach you something. And there a lot of times, the reason I think we as a species, I don't mean society. I mean, as a species, we tell each other stories is to either impart some understanding or some knowledge. And I, you know, the thing is you can find value in just about anything um, because you can find the humanity in it, you know, as off the rails, sometimes as the MCU gets, I, I, the camaraderie aspect of infinity war to end game actually gets me. I know you have your strong beliefs on that, but there's infinity uh, war. Good. Infinity War, very good. Endgame War, very is good. trashed here. Endgame is Endga trashed. Endgame. Endgame, Endgame is watchable for me. I, I, I like that movie because of the... Yeah, at one I'm point sorry. in time, you were smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dick. You are a straight dick. Because uh, you know what I'm arguing for. I know. Uh, Go for it. But it's just... There is always a point to a story. We tell the story for a point. And camaraderie is a big one. Friendship is mm. something that comes up a lot and often harped on to an extreme. See our previous video on that one. Um, there is, you know, forgiveness. There is acceptance. There's a lot of things that we tell stories to do. And 
what I'm struggling with is how somebody's sexual orientation factors into that. If you want to talk about, and no, 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 follow me on this one here uh -uh. for a second. It's, it's, no, let me finish. You say we talk over each other too much, so shut up. I didn't say <laughs> a word. I shook yeah, my head. You were, you were about to, though. No, I, I know, know where you. you're going, though. Anyway, go on. But anyway, if you want to write a story, and I do mean write one, about somebody who is of a certain orientation and chart their path and their character development or, you know, events or anything and how they navigate through it. I think it could be actually really compelling because it's a perspective I don't think the majority of people see. But what I think the issue comes down to is that, at least from the backlash point of view is is that when you just insert this shit into an established character an established mythology an established lore you can't do that and some of it i think is twofold one you can't do that because it breaks what made that story resonate this story was about hope is about overthrowing essentially space nazis and now all of a sudden you're clouding it with nonsense, essentially. It doesn't matter if Obi-Wan's by. It doesn't matter if Leia had a lesbian kiss. That is irrelevant to the overall story. And so it feels foreign. And when you start doing that too much, you're going to alienate people. But the problem is, is that when you alienate those people and they yell about it, then you can't argue with the politics. You got to be inclusive. So, and I, and again, that's the catch 22 as I see it. You're going to, well, there's not really a catch 22 here. You know, well, the what, catch, the catch 22 for the lay person as yeah. the, let me just spell it out before you finish your point. The catch 22 is that, okay, this is a story about opposing tyranny, which is good. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. We can all get on board with that. Versus, you know, what are you going to say? You support tyranny? Unless you're Napoleon or Henry VIII. No. Um, I got to cut you oh, off. I, I got to cut okay. you off here. Okay, cut me off. It's fine. And, no, and, and, here's, and, and here's why. Because you are attacking this from a standpoint of believing that the morality and the ethics that have literally driven us to the greatest that mankind has ever been, the kindness, camaraderie, the golden freaking rule, right? Do unto, do unto others, each other. Yeah, yeah, as you would have others do unto you. That yeah. stuff here, you know, the non-aggression principle, those things. Yeah, do you, no are, you are attacking this from a place where you think that they could even possibly understand. They don't possess any of that inside of them they don't know these things if you look at how these people are that the 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 people that they keep around them will stab them in the back the second they, they don't know true companionship they don't know this true camaraderie they don't understand treating somebody else as they want as they would want to be treated because they don't they don't know who they are they don't know how they want to be treated you're attacking it from a standpoint that they even understand these concepts at all and they don't they are blind to them and they are devoid of them De void of them not yeah. devoid no you were right um also just how incredibly sad but it's like, but it is the case though, and you're right. It's hugely sad, but and that's why I had to cut you off is because, and, and that's that's one of the things that really helped me to come to this understanding of how instead of trying to explain this stuff to them because yeah. they're not a large majority of people, but they are large enough to obviously cause a kerfuffle, as we can see. And loud, right? Yeah. Oh, and very loud, yeah. but. What we have to understand is instead of trying to explain this to people, we simply have to do it and we have to do it. And there are a lot of people out there that support these ideas. That's the problem. Everybody goes, why are they doing this? These characters, why are they doing it? Because their morality is their morality, their ethics, their codes, the things that drive them are not rooted in anything that is remotely close to in the same universe as the codes and ethics that you just described.
Yeah. I mean, I mean, come on, dude, you work in a, a you, you work and I won't say the store, but you work around a bunch of them. I work in you've, a music retail place, yes. Yes, yeah. You yeah. work around a bunch of them. You've told me the stories. You've told me the conversations. You've told me how these people, they don't they don't operate in the same space as as you and I would that we would go this is normal human interaction you'd be able to crack a joke and make some wise here and there you're not allowed to do that it's no. not you can't you can't like when somebody's flipping the hell out you can't go dude calm the hell down and just hey and just you know not a sexual touch but just like hey just calm the fuck down you can't even do that when they're losing their because they don't understand nor do they grasp True well, that companionship person was and without from, well no but I know yeah, I'm yeah, aware yeah. You, but, you know yeah but what I'm saying and I only use that as an example because what I'm saying is that they don't understand true companionship the only companionship no they I, have I, ever will say, known, I, I, I will say this politically you it, know oh one second this, the only companionship they've ever because I was about to end the only companionship no, they've no. ever known is the companionship of a sexual nature that's also very sad, actually. Um, no, I will say this. The majority of the people I encounter at my store and the day-to-day -day variety, I have no issue with most of them, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, there are disagreements. There's always going to be disagreements. Yeah. There's never an issue. Um, the person you were referring to, yeah. yeah, mm. yeah. It's the I wasn't age referring to the necessarily the person just the type and it's not a bad thing it's just you know it is such a societal thing that you can't be reassuring to anybody anymore especially through touch oh god no. um yeah the and, the, yeah uh, the reassuring touch that's that's yeah. gone that's, that's that's gone that that is not a thing because because yeah. and i think i think that's the point that we're coming down to and i i know we're kind of dancing around it using some of my work experience as a bit of a lens here mm -hmm. but I think that's the point it's coming down to is, is that there is camaraderie. Honestly, I think it'd be the word of the day at this point mm -hmm. is, is that reassuring and supportive and, you know, what we'd otherwise call a what fraternity. Hey guys, He's making random noise. Yeah. Apparently random my, noise. Yeah. My phone just decided to start playing YouTube. It's uh, probably cause you, Pushed a button without meaning to. A button. It's a touch screen, but still. Anyway, it's Clownfish um, TV for those who are wondering. I, yeah, anyway. no, it's a good channel. Yeah. Um, channel. But anyway. <laughs> but anywho. No, it's. Uh, hey, look at that you, beard. You, you don't get that anymore. It's, And I think that is why you see such a backlash to uh, Rings of Power. Is because you think about what Frodo and Sam went through, and you think about you know Mary and Pippin, the Hobbits, oh, dude, and the amount of people when I was a kid that were like, like I was in like fourth grade when those movies. No, I, I was older than anyway, but the you amount of people that were just that. like, oh, yeah. well, no, that not the first one, the first oh, one. one to oh, oh one to oh three, one a year. Oh one was Fellowship. Oh two was Two Towers. Oh three was Return of the King. Because they filmed them all at once and released um, them either way. But that. anyway, but I but. I was in a younger grade, but regardless, and only because I know the school that I was in and I obviously changed schools, but dude, right, people were right. like, Oh, Frodo and Sam are gay. And like, people were saying, that, and we're like, no, dude, you don't understand companionship. I, I had the same argument about that. Uh, you haven't seen this. So I'm sorry, dude. I know you don't care, but spoilers for anybody who has not seen season 15 is supernatural. I don't care. When Castiel sacrifices himself to the empty, and he tells Dean that, you know, he loves him. I, and I think a lot of people, hopefully, yeah. read that as a fraternal love. Castile rescued Dean from hell. They were brothers. They were supporting each other. Obviously, they were up and downs. But it was very much a fraternal thing. And then, of course, everybody goes to STL. They were gay lovers, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, but... Okay, right or wrong, it doesn't matter because the events happened the way they did. And and it is and it is because the fr they 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 these people are completely hollow in the center when it comes to any of these things that we're talking about. They genuinely do not know true friendship. You and I have been through some shit. That 
and they truly don't, depresses me though. I but that's what it is. And they've they don't understand they 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 don't understand like like I was raised with there were there were like five different kinds of love, right? There was love you had for friends, love yeah, the, the, your family. But but anyway, it's the but Greek. I, it's the Greek, yeah, and you can I, look them all up. There's eros and pathos. One and we called the pizza like, love, right? Like you say, I love yeah. this thing because it's pizza, right? It's just like you know, there's this, yeah, the, you know, it's your favorite thing that you like. That's like you direct it towards movies. You, you know, then you obviously have the love of a spouse, but. They they don't know that to them. The only thing that love is, which I was raised that love is just a commitment to another person. So if I love pizza, well, I'm committing myself to the pizza in that it is my favorite food, which it is not. Burgers are my favorite food. So I love burgers, but with um, jalapenos. Oh, with jalapenos and some of that, that habanero hot sauce my wife makes. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, no. Okay, I love my wife. I am committing myself to her, and that's a different kind of love. That that is mm-hmm. different. You know, I love my friends. Like I know you and I have said that shit to each other in some serious fucking moments because it's, hey, it's, it's, you're, it's, my it's, you're my buddy. You're my bro. I'm committed to you, and that's the fucking thing that these people they they are devoid of that. The only thing to them that is love is See, this. I hate. Ass- is, I hate. I hate assuming other perspective. I really do because I don't like to cast intent or belief on other people i i I think that infringes on on autonomy only to a point because i can only observe pattern of behavior exactly and i was about to say that you know look at someone's actions okay look at someone's actions and they'll tell you exactly what it is when people say well you can't touch it well why not well because that's you know that's sexual no it's not so they don't understand Well, at least it wasn't meant to be no no but what i'm saying is that people don't have these concepts they don't know these things they don't have true friendships they don't know love in their life outside of what is sexual and what is sexual is not necessarily love they and so to them they are trying to tell the most moral story that they can while completely and utterly missing what has driven mankind to the heights that we have because they sadly in their lives have probably never experienced it or if they have, it is to the most shallow of depths that it was as strong as wet paper. Yeah. And so because of that, they got to insert all this. So, okay, I guess the question at that point becomes, okay, how does making Dumbledore gay Obi-Wan by how does that actually help then? So okay, so because and they, the article I read was Obi Wan considered kissing some of the boys. That's where all of this is coming from. It's in a novel that they're coming yeah. out for the new, yes. yeah. And so, I mean, I think at the time he's supposed to be a teenager, so maybe the, you could just say that there's some wondering. Never but, secede ground. Never secede ground to these principles. And again. What you say, why inject all this stuff? Because to them, this is morality. This is the only morality that they know, and it is skin deep. If they are devoid of all the rest of that stuff, what else is there? Well, no, you're not wrong. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't like. Look at know, how they've been for the last seven years. I know, I know, but judge based on actions, but also, you know, don't paint every, everybody with a brush. Um, I'm I'm not painting everybody with a brush. I'm painting a very very specific sect of the population with uh, a freaking brush. No, 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 no. I understand. I just, I guess all I'm doing is pleading for a certain amount of common sense. Is that just then we have to be the ones to do it? Well, that's what I'm doing. No, exactly. What I I know, I know, I know. But that's what I'm saying. Don't. We can't plead with them because they don't understand. And until they experience something, they won't get it. But if you and I just sit here and have these conversations with like-minded people and try to get them to maybe share a video and say, hey, man, these guys are talking. Hey, you know, you you know, you you said that stuff and these guys had a different perspective on it. And it's just talking. It's just talking and just explaining our thoughts and ideas because those will win out. I don't know. I, I guess I just have a hard time with the whole inclusivity thing because just people are people treat them kindly that's all it takes that's all it takes it's stupid simple it's probably overly simple oh yeah but the problem is is that when you have people that 
don't understand that at all in any way. All they can base their morality off of is what they can see and what they yeah. can see. What a, what a sad way to look at life, though. Just truly, truly, it's a sad way to look at life. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah. But so I guess in a nutshell, Obi-Wan's by because people don't know how else to reassure themselves or be able to find meaning out of things without inserting their own viewpoints on it. That's what it comes down to. I Personally, that's what I think it is. It's, I mean, you can see the pattern of behavior. It's there. It's, but, you know, the thing is, is, is that at least in my own interactions and at least what I can see from the people who interact around me is that it doesn't matter. Do what you want to do. You know, love who you love, do what you want to do, just treat people kindly, you'll be fine. So if we can just get back to that. Well, and I think most people are that way in life, but when it comes to... Because stories, no, stories, the, 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 are, the, specific, the, stories are specifically meant to convey yes. morality to people. They're it's, a message. That's why I brought up the parable thing earlier. Yeah, no, that, that's actually yeah, why yeah. I came back to this, is because yeah, you brought yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. No, but... And so if you're asking people to just be kind, do it. Most people are even the crazies that we would disagree with on this front. The problem is, yes. is when you say, well, I want people to write stories that are moral again. Be very careful of which person you ask to write that story because their morality may not be something you recognize. And I think the issue, at least as I see it, you can disagree with this if you want. But um, the way I see it is there's a difference between morality and agenda. If you are talking, morality is just how you treat people. But an agenda is you have a goal in mind. And obviously. And so if you are writing a story with morality, then it should be as Tolkien. Friendship, fellowship, camaraderie, love, you know, and the defeating of evil. That's not hard to get behind. Um agenda is when you start saying well the orcs were sentient too and well what was the racial circumstance it's just like okay but you're approaching this with an agenda to try and argue a different topic you're not uh, arguing lord of the rings anymore you're now trying to use that as a point for something else i would disagree that they have separated because, again, if they have no belief structure in them of something higher and the only right. thing that they believe in is the agenda, to them, they're not pushing an agenda. They're just pushing morality. Again, dude, um, it boils I think, back I think down. You'll find representatives of both. But well, yeah, yeah. and I, I and that's where I'm at. But, uh, man, I'll give you the last word here because we've been going for a little bit. But this has been yeah, no, this was a lot no better problem. of a conversation than I thought we were going to be able to convey. <laughs> I really think like, cause sometimes well, we get off in the weeds a little bit. This was really good. I thought that toot your own horn. Why don't you? Anyway? Um, no, it's see if I compliment word. you again, Dick. <laughs> anyway, <Thank you. laughs> hey, look at that new beer. But, uh, but anyway, no, I guess the point I would drive to is, um, Stories, you know, th there's a line in Two Towers, uh, the movie, not the book, um, that, Heretic. you know, the, uh, well, it's because I think it I comes from no. the screenwriters, but it's, you know, you know, tell me again about, you know, Frodo and the Ring, the stories that really matter. And why do they really matter? Because they uplift us, because they are inspiring, because they are something that we can look at the values of and hold dear, you know, friendship, camaraderie, loyalty. These are all valid and important things. And I guess if I'm really honest, I'm just tired of people being divisive. I'm tired of it being an LGBT versus the straight. I'm tired of the black versus white. I'm tired of the men versus women. I'm tired of us always at least 
on that sphere of political and social discourse being an antagonistic relationship because it should not be it should be a partnership where we hold to those values and i would look very critically at stories that aren't upholding that that's what i'm going to leave us with no and i don't think that you're wrong and like i said i think a lot of what's going on right now is definitely it's part of a plan that i'm not going to get into here because i like the way that you left it but let's just say i personally believe that all this divisiveness has been uh, uh, coerced into our society um, through a lot of the uh, propaganda through through the years and certain people that are are doing mm-hmm. things. But no, I don't. There are bad that. actors out there for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. But thank you all for checking out a drink with crazy. We really had a blast with this conversation. We would like to do more of these conversations, and hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below. If you did, hit the like button if you liked it. And if you guys really, really liked it, subscribe to the channel. And if you guys really, really, really liked it, share it with your friends. And let them know that there are other like-minded people out there who we just want to have conversations. We just want to talk about some things. So thank you all so much. And with that being said, we'll see you next time right here on A Drink with Crazy. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink with Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.